All right, guys, so on today's video, we're actually going to look at uh, my game room, uh, where I play all of, uh, all of the games that you see on all of the videos that I do every week. And uh, unfortunately, I actually live in an apartment, and my game room is actually a very small bedroom. Uh, so as you can see here, uh, this is all the space that we have to work with. Um, it's not very big at all. Um, so what we did is we actually took this whole wall over here and basically filled it with these cubes that you can pretty much buy at any department store. And that is our, <clears throat> that's our entertainment center slash dresser. Um, so I don't have everything that I own hooked up because um, it's just not a possibility. But we do have quite a few things hooked up in a really small space. Um, so... Let's start with the, uh, I guess we'll start with the television here. Um, so this is just a 42 inch uh, Vizio uh, flat panel television. And uh, as we can see here, that pretty much fills the space. So that's about as big as we could go. Um, the audio we actually have here, this is my old home theater in a box from probably 10 years ago, I think is how old it is now. Um, but it doesn't take up much space. Uh, the left and right speakers, uh, you know, can just hang on the wall. And then if we come over here, there's a subwoofer in the corner. Not the greatest sounding audio system in the world, um, but it does work. Um, so moving out, uh, we'll kind of back this up a step. So feeding the television is going to be the XRGB Mini Frame Meister. Um, so we can see here, we've got uh, RGB input, we've got a Super Nintendo and a Sega Genesis RGB SCART cable. Uh, we can see back here, we have a component. So right now that's the GameCube, um, but we might use that for the Xbox and the PlayStation Portable as well. Um, on the front, we have uh, S-Video, which we use for the Saturn and PlayStation. And we only use that because I don't have RGB cables for those systems yet. And then we do have a composite, which is generally not desirable, but uh, for the NES and the Atari flashback, um, and I guess the regular Atari in the Atari 7800, that's as good as it gets. So that's kind of the brains of the operation. Um, let's take a step over down here. Uh, this is our AV switcher. Um, so this is used less and less as I get more RGB cables. Um, so right now, we can see here I've got a dangling cable here. This will be for when I want to record um, N64 footage. But this is S-Video and Composite. Um, so that is where the PlayStation, well I guess the JAG, um, the Saturn when it's hooked up uh, will be S-Video and it all goes into there and then to the RGB Mini and then to the television. Um, let's kind of move over here. So there's the Super Nintendo with uh, RGB, the regular NES with composite, um, the Sega 32X, Sega CD, Sega Genesis combo is a bit uh, tall. It won't fit in a one by one cube. Um, so that gets a top shelf here. Um, but as we can see, uh, the cable back there, that's not really all that terrible. Um, it's not as bad as people say. And then of course the Vectrex, which uh, we just took a look at. You definitely want to check that out. Um, here's a cubby hole full of games, so this is where the Vectrex games live, and then that's also games that I've been recently playing or would like to do a review on soon. So we've got uh, Lunar, Dynamite Heady, Castlevania, Symphony of the Night, Rayman 2, um, probably a couple of 32x games in here, T-Mech and Doom, and that's where they kind of live. Um, now the power situation, everything gets routed to two different power strips. So this one down here is going to be the messier of the two. So this is pretty much everything that either needs to be on all the time and then the, the consoles that don't have a big wall wart. So like right here is probably the Dreamcast and you can kind of see the rest of the mess. 
Now all the systems that have wall warts get routed down to this drawer. So if we open this up, we have Sega Genesis, Super Nintendo, NES, JAG, all of that stuff kind of in here. And then if we ever need to play, oh yeah, these are all hooked up into like a, a squid type power, uh, I don't know what you would call it, power strip I guess, surge protector. So when I need that, I can just power that on, and then when I'm done, turn it off, and then we're not wasting electricity. The rest of these drawers down here are going to be controllers and cables. So pretty much all the systems on the left side are going to be in here. Let's check the next drawer. This is actually kind of a miscellaneous Sega drawer. We've got a CDX, Saturn, the cables for those systems. Looks like there's a Sega Nomad hiding in here. And uh, backup 32X in there. Moving over, we should have Neo Geo controller and then some more random wires and controllers for the systems that are sort of on the right side of the setup. And then the final drawer is going to be the Sega Dreamcast drawer. So we've got, uh, we've got a big fat RGB cable here. We've got... Oh, it's too expensive. There we go. We've got the Toro that I've uh, talked about a few different times. So that's the Dreamcast VGA adapter. And then of course the Dreamcast right there. Um, so basically when I play the Dreamcast I kind of have to put it on the floor, hook everything up, and then uh, that's how that works. So what we have on the floor here are two 20-foot uh, HDMI cables. So basically anytime I'm playing games, um, I am recording um, either to use in a top 5 video or for a full on review. Um, there's not often that I'm playing but not recording unless it's a game that I need a little bit of practice to get into. So basically on the XRGB Mini, this is the HDMI output. So that comes out, follows along the cables onto the floor, and then comes to the game capture HD. So whenever I'm recording, I take this and then I basically put it there. Here's a USB cable that goes to the Mac. And if we look over this little wall, this is where all the magic happens. So there's the iMac, nice pair of headphones, the uh, microphone, and that's pretty much where every video is made. So we can kind of follow that. And then from that box, we then go right back up to the television, right here. So all the audio is fed, all the audio and video is fed to the Vizio. And then I have an optical cable out to the receiver. So that means I can play all of my games upscaled in HD. It's recorded and then it also plays out here so we can kind of play in the best quality possible and record in the best quality possible. Um, so that is pretty much the game room. Again, the whole design here is to be able to um, do as much as we can in as little space as we can. And this is kind of how we accomplish that. So again, in just a little bit of uh, space here, six feet by three feet maybe, we've got the 32X, the Genesis, the Sega CD. We can play PlayStation, Super Nintendo, regular Nintendo, JAG, JAG CD, GameCube, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Super Game Boy, I almost forgot about that, and then also the Sega Dreamcast and the Vectrex, all in just a little spot. And then every probably six months we uh, some of these will be put into storage and other systems like the Saturn or Neo Geo CD um, or Nintendo 64 will kind of come out and uh, replace a cubby hole. So that's kind of my little, um, you know, if you live in an apartment, you don't have a house, you don't have a dedicated game room, um, you know, you kind of don't need one. You can, you can do everything in a little tiny spot and uh, have awesome picture quality, record or do whatever you want. So hope you enjoyed this video guys and uh, I'll talk to you later.